Oh, it's so nice to revisit this. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> so good. I'm gonna leave that part in. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Life in a Bottle. Season one, episode special, special edition. edition one, maybe, I don't know. I'm Mitch, over there's Kyle, special guest today, Josh Hatton. Welcome we are Josh. here yeah. to talk about this lovely whiskey. But before that, Josh, Yeah. who the hell are you? Who? <laughs> Tell I us a little bit about yourself, Josh. <laughs> what brings you here today? I ask myself that question <laughs> yeah, all the time. Yeah, yeah. Who the hell am I and yeah. why the hell am I That's here? That's a deep one, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so I work for Impex Beverages, who is the importer uh, of Oishi Whiskey, uh, among many other brands, but Oishi Whiskey is, is one of the first Japanese brands that, that we started importing maybe three years ago or so. Mm. Um, we focus on importing whiskeys from independent, small, family-owned distilleries. That, that, is our, that is our focus. Uh, sort of highlighting the unsung heroes in the in the whiskey world, if you will. That fits right into our. We little, have a lot of friends who do mode. that. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Real nice. people making yeah wonderful real products. So good. Uh, and what's super special about this particular bottle? Before we get into the backstory of Oishi. Okay. Uh, so I, I remember coming to see you guys. See, I remember coming here. I just don't remember how long it was. A few months back. It, it's it's somewhat rare that. Oishi Distillery will release cask samples and 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 bottle single casks. That is huh. that is not their thing. Blending we, is their jam. Blending is their jam. Uh, you know, having said that, we, we do a few a year, but it really is just that. It's it's a few. And so for Oishi, they have two primary cask types that they work with, X Brandy and X Sherry. Now this one is from an X Sherry cask, from an Oloroso Sherry cask and it will have been from a second or third use cask. So there's a bit less sherry influence. What I liked about this, and I think you guys found this too, is that yes, you get some of that oak in there, some of that sherry influence, but it's not masking the spirit. Mm -hmm. It's kind of letting sure. the, that spirit, that buttery quality, that spirit coming through. Buttery, good yeah. choice. Yeah. Um, so Ishii, um we had carried their products for a while. Mm -hmm. Love their products, then you brought to us this idea of doing our own barrel. Correct. Um, and then, yeah, so we tried one day here, mm -hmm. five different samples uh, out of tiny little bottles. I wish I had one, but I don't. Anyway, uh, and we came, we, we were like, this is the one. Yes. And I actually have a video of us doing that, oh, and I might yeah. splice it in a little okay. bit here. Okay. Yeah. See how good I am on the editing side of things. Um, because it's funny, I watched the video the other day, and we go through all five, yeah. and then we go back to this, and the second we go back to this, we're like, this is the one. Yes. Um, we'll get to like the flavor profile in a second or two. Tell me the quick backstory of Oishi. Uh, what is this mm -hmm. Japanese whiskey okay. versus maybe this is not a single malt? Correct. Right. Yeah, m most people, when they think of Japanese whiskey, they're thinking of maybe Yamazaki or Yoichi or Hibiki, right? Hibiki mm -hmm. being a blend. But if you think about the whiskey production in Japan and the start of it, somewhere around 1923 or so, uh, if you look at the, like a Suntory Yamazaki bottle, it'll say 1923 on it. So that's single malt production in Japan. Oishi was built in 1872, wow. right? So we're predating what, what people consider Japanese whiskey. Right? So to that point, you're saying single malt started X. This started well before. Yes. What does that make this? So this is actually a whiskey from rice. Interesting. Right? So what, what's what's the definition of whiskey? The definition, ah, the definition of whiskey in the U.S. is a spirit made from grains matured in a cask at at least 40% alcohol. Rice is a grain. It's been matured in cask. And we have 40.7%, and that's natural <laughs> cask strength. Interesting, so we're just, okay. We're just, just a hair over there. Um, so it's, it's produced in a, in, a, in a slightly different way than, again, back to the example of single malt. Um, you know, with, with single malt, you've got three ingredients. You've got barley, yeast, and water. You use those ingredients to make a beer, mm -hmm. a hopless beer. Mm -hmm. You distill it, you mature it in cask, you bottle it. 
that, that, that's single malt whiskey. In this case, what they're doing is they're actually producing um, a sake, a really high octane sake. Okay. Um, that's meant for distilling, <clears throat> not meant for drinking. Okay. So they distill that sake and then they put it into into cask. So yeah. Josh, talk us through what you're experiencing with what's in this. Okay, this. good. Um, it's delicious. Besides that, you need more depth. I'm getting there. Okay. So one of the to things. your point, you know, <laughs> well, so here's another super yeah. valid. Like we tasted it and we made this decision out of this little vial. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And then we're like, woo, thumbs up. And then mm. you're like, great. And then all of a sudden you're like, it's here. And we're like, woo. And then it comes in and we pay for it. Mm. And then we open a bottle and then we feel, wow, it's every bit as good as we thought, if not oh, good, better. Good, good, and good. And it's a good, <laughs> it's a nice <sighs> moment. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm sorry. I, oh, I interrupted that's, that's your... Right. Uh, well, no, it, it gave me time to nose it a bit more and actually taste it and, and re you know, refamiliarize myself uh, with this whiskey. Um, the thing that grabbed me first off on the nose, there's this sort of, and I, I hope I'm not getting too techni technical or, or, or dorky about some of these words, um, but there's this sort of high sweetness that I sometimes get from like a weeded bourbon, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this sort of cotton candy sweetness, top note, but beneath that is this just soft, buttery quality. There's that word again, mm -hmm. right? Buttery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, buttery. Yeah. And then you go to taste it, and one of the, one of the things I love about the first sip of whiskey is it affects how it smells right after. 100%. So you, you take that first smell, then you sip it, and then you go back, mm -hmm. and now it changed it completely. And so after that first sip, that that cotton candy sweetness goes away a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then it's a bit more focused again, back on that buttery quality. But it's a, I don't know if you're getting this. I get a, a hint of of umami, a hint of saltiness mm -hmm. going on like in there. Like a brininess. Type yeah, like thing. a slight yeah. brininess, but nothing like you would. This is not a smoky whiskey, so it's nothing mm -hmm. like you think of a right. brininess and mm -hmm. smoky Scotch it's whiskey. Not just, yeah, yeah, right. exactly, exactly. Uh, and just soft fruits. Just mm -hmm. like a, a bit, a bit of apple pie going on there. Just like it's funny you say apple pie. I was pie crust. Yeah, it yeah, was yeah. The first yeah. thing that jumped and out what's in with pie crust? Butter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It keeps reverting back to that. Yeah. And the texture. If you go back to it, it rolls on the tongue. It really, it's, it's, it's soft and it's pleasant. It's silky butter. Silky, yeah, yeah. Butter. yeah. Easy to drink a lot of. And and I, I a bit keep dangerous. going back to yeah. the uh, to the butter. Yeah, that's yeah. we should probably wrap up pretty soon. Um, <laughs> so the funny, I think the thing we took away when we originally, and, and hence the theoretical or not theoretical, the actual name of it is the cookie, mm -hmm. because we kept going back to that butter cookie type yes. of thing. Yes. That warm butter cookie out of the oven type of thing, and how just sure. decadent it is, mm -hmm. and yeah, how sure it melts bread. in the yeah. mouth, and it's coating and it's rich but it's not overpowering yeah yeah just a, just a beautiful whiskey so it, i i remember the day tasting you on this and i had just come back from scotland the week before and every bed and breakfast every hotel i was at had those little walker shortbread cookies mm -hmm. and so that's you, know, you get into your room oh that's my little treat there you okay go. there you go oh there's another one i left for myself in the morning okay <laughs> and you have that and uh i always long for for scotland when when i leave and then coming here and tasting this and getting a lot of those flavors from the shortbread cookies in this whiskey um, it's weird to be transported back to Scotland through the lens of a Japanese whiskey. By way of Japan. Right, but it's it, a long trip. It works. <laughs> with a cookie in the middle. Yeah, with a cookie yeah. in the middle. Here's the cookies. Yeah, here's Cheers. the cookies. Cheers. Cheers.